Hey guys, for today's lesson, we're going to be taking a look at different ways of creating solids in Rhino and how to complete the first portion of uh, exercise two. Uh, in order to do that, uh, as you will see, it becomes very important. We, the, one of the first things that we need to do is make sure that we're working in the correct scale and with the proper units. So the first thing I want everybody to do is to type units onto their command and then um, when it comes up, I would like for you guys to work in inches this time. Um, everybody should be in inches. And I want you to change your display distance into feet and inches and change the precision to 1 16th and then hit OK. Um, that will ensure that everybody is at the right scale uh, because as you guys can see from the exercise instructions, we're going to be working with an object that is uh, bound within a four inch by four inch by four inch cube, right? So uh, that becomes really important. And I will show you guys how to make a cube in just a second. But as a reminder, I just wanna point out that last time uh, for the last exercise, the way that we built solid objects is that we put points in space and then we join those points with uh, with polylines, and then those polylines we turned into planar surfaces, right, that we could then see, right? And once we put enough of those planar surfaces together, we were able to create an enclosed object, right? So I just have to do this one more time, and I could grab all of them and join them. Again, right, join them, and now I have a solid poly surface. So that was the first way in which we talked about how to create solids by adding surfaces or planes together. Okay, there are many other ways of creating surfaces, and so that's what I really want to go over with you guys today. So one of the first things that we could do is we can go here into the solids panel, and in the solids panel, we can see that there are uh, a variety of different types of solids that we can make. We can make boxes, spheres, cylinders, cones, etc. Now you have to remember that some of these uh, are not developable surfaces. So for example, spheres have double curvature, so those are not developable, right? So uh, for this exercise, we're only gonna still be working with developable surfaces. I want you guys first to test out how to make a box. So, uh, if we type box, you know, we, if we could build that four inch by four inch by four inch box by typing in our first uh, corner at zero comma zero comma zero, and then our second at four comma four, and then we give it a height of four, right? And now that we've built a box. Um, so that's, that's a cube, right? It's this a perfect size. So that would be one way that we could build another type of solid. We could then go back up and we could select, for example, a cylinder. And a cylinder is based off of a center, a radius, and a height. So the radius we could say is two, and the height we could say is four, right? And then we would have a cylinder that very neatly fits into our box, for example, right? So that is something else that we could do, or we could do uh, a cone, right? For example, a cone is gonna be very similar to a cylinder, but instead of being a parallel extrusion, right? It's an extrusion towards a point, right? So those are some different ways in which we could begin to build uh, solids, right? From the solid panel. Now, one of the important things to know is that once that we built these solids, we can change their shape Right, and we can change their shape by scaling them. So one of the things we can do is we can type scale and we can change the scale of the whole object. So, and, and have that be relative to the two points that we chose. So in this case, you guys can see, I chose one of the edges and, and, and one of the points on the vertices and another point. So that, those were four apart. So if I type two, now they're gonna be half, this object is gonna be 
uh, obviously um, half the length, right, in, in every direction, right? But now, instead, if I wanted to actually change it in only one direction, I would type scale 1D, and now I would select the vertice C from which I want to start, and another point, and now, and now I can just actually change the dimension along one axis, right? So I could change it first along the Y axis, then along the X axis, and then finally I could change it along the Z, right? So that would be another way. Of course, you guys can see that as I'm changing it, right, because I'm still following the axes, the object still keeps its, uh, the same kind of uh, relationship between the faces. Uh, I can also scale 1D uh, along a non-axial uh, vert um, line, I guess, right? And so in which case we would begin to deform the object, right? So it goes from being uh, all orthogonal to uh, being um, all oblique angles. Right? But that's another way in which we could begin to uh, change this solid. Right? And we can do that to any one of these different types of forms. And I could do that also to this one. Right? So I could still also scale this object. So that would be a different way of making those forms. Uh, and then finally, the last way that I want to show you how to make forms is through extrusions. So very similar to these, but and I guess in a way that's more um, procedural, you could start out by drawing some kind of line work, right? And once you have that closed polyline, then we can extrude that. And if you remember, we can do two types of extrusions. We can do parallel extrusions, which would create a type of cylinder, or we can do conical extrusions, which would create some version of a cone. And so if, you, if I just type extrude, uh, the first option is cylindrical in nature, right? So we would be creating, and we could set the height. So we could do four, right? And if you notice that, it's gonna create an open, an object that doesn't really have a top or a bottom. Because it's a cylindrical extrusion, I can just grab it, type cap, press enter, and now it's a closed object, right? Um, so that would be one way, another way that you could create. And all of these are, as you can tell, planar surfaces. So we wouldn't have any kind of problem building that. Now, if I delete this and I do that exact same thing, that extrusion, but you look at here and I could actually, I can choose the direction. By default, the direction is vertical, but I could also choose the direction and I could say that actually I want it to be angled like this, right? So all of a sudden that extrusion is coming in at an angle. Uh, and it is still a developable surface and it is still something that we can cap, right? But it's now, once again, it's almost very similar to that uh, scaling one dimension uh, in an oblique angle, right? It, it deforms the, uh, the angles of the object. Right, and then finally, the, the last thing that I could do before I, I uh, end this tutorial is I could, I could rather than extruding uh, along parallel lines, I, I could extrude the curve to a point, right? Extrude curve to point, in which case I would be extruding And making a conical extrusion. Once again, I can cap that object to close it off. And as you can see, the thing with conical extrusions is that you have to tell it where that end of that cone has to be. So in a certain sense, for conical extrusions, before I do a conical extrusion, I probably want to place a point exactly where I want it. So um, move that point vertically, for example, like three. And now I know if I do that again, extrude curve to point, select my curve, and now bring it to that point. 
I always have to tell it where where to extrude to, right? Um, and that's it. So I want you guys uh, for this first portion of the exercise to begin to just play around with uh, different ways of creating different types of volumes and then begin to create a composition of three of them. And we will talk about what that composition uh, can begin to look like in just a second.